Everybody wants to talk about how to hit the driver, but I'm here to tell you there's three other clubs that are really important if you actually want to lower your score. Today we're going to talk about those three clubs, and the best part is I brought in a good friend here who's an expert on playing golf who's going to help you understand how to do that. I'm PGA Teaching Professional Todd Cope, Director of Instruction for US Golf TV and the Sanford Power Golf Academy, and you are in for a treat today because not only are we going to give you some great information on your hybrid, your wedge, and your putter, but I brought in one of the best players in the world, somebody who's played the game for a living for 24 years. It's going to help share some real insights for you. So let's get right into it. Cindy, this is one of your first times here with us at US Golf TV and the Sanford Power Golf Academy. Tell our viewers a little bit quickly about yourself because we got some great content to get to. Sure, you bet. Thank you, Todd. First of all, for being here, I'm, I'm really excited about this and hopefully we'll be helping you golfers out there. Um, I did play the tour for a long time, had six wins on the tour, and fortunately, I kind of know what does work under pressure and, and what doesn't, so let's get to it. Anytime you can win on the tour and you've done it six times, you know what you're talking about. So this is what we're going to do. Now, hey, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Be sure to join us here at US Golf TV. This is the place for you. If you love golf, US Golf TV, the Sanford Power Golf Academy, we're here to help you play better golf. We're putting out great stuff all the time, so be sure to subscribe. And you know what? My favorite thing is when you leave a comment or you ask a question. I love answering those and getting some feedback from you. All right, so let's dive right into this. The first club I want to talk about, and I want your insights on as a tour professional, the hybrid. I think it's one of the most important clubs in the bag. Tell us a little bit about the hybrid. What should we be doing when we're swinging that club? Well, I love the hybrids because they're versatile. They are designed to be able to hit on a perfect lie or out of a bad lie. You don't have to worry so much if you, you know, if you ended up in a divot in the fairway or a divot in the rough or in some deep grass, you know, let the club do the work. That's what it was designed to do. You really don't have to do anything differently than just swing it. Let the club, but the ball position, of course, is very important um, when you're in the rough. Put it a little bit more forward in your stance. And if you're in a divot or something, maybe place it a little back in your stance. So ball position in a bad lie is important, but if it's a perfect lie, just go ahead and put it a little bit left of center and you're in good shape. Because the club itself is, is just, it's so well designed because it helps to get the ball up in there. Like you said, you can hit out of different types of lies. Do you feel in your experience, you've probably hit a lot of quality hybrids in your day, is it, is it a different swing? Is it a different tempo or is it pretty consistent or is it, is it more like a, a uh, a five wood swing or an iron swing, or do you have any thoughts on that? Because I think a lot of golfers, they're, they're confused. Like, it's not my driver and it's not an iron, it's in between, what should I be doing? Well, you're absolutely right, it is in between. It's in between an iron and a wood. And so I would play it more like a sweeping effect instead of hitting it down, a descending blow. I mean, it's still gonna be coming down, but you wanna kinda keep it going through the grass. You want it getting through. So instead of you know really coming down at a steep angle, I would uh, tend more to lean towards sweeping it. A little, maybe a little bit more like a fairway wood yes. than, than like a seven iron or something Absolutely. like that? Absolutely. Okay, I love that. Anything else in terms of the tempo with it or, or anything in terms of, of the length of swing or those types of stuff? Is it more of an iron length of swing? Or is it more of a driver length, or does it depend on the shot? Well, the shaft itself is a little longer than an iron and less than a driver, so yeah. somewhere in the middle, but the length of the swing itself, it just, it just I guess, depends on your lie, how much you want to control it. You might want to choke down a little bit, but otherwise, <clears throat> just a smooth tempo, nothing, nothing rushed. In any club in your bag, never rush your backswing. Yeah, and so um, one of the questions here on hybrids before we move on to, we're going to talk a little bit about wedges and then also some putting stuff at the end, and we're going to give a great bonus tip here at the end along with that. But it, I see a lot of golfers, uh, female golfers, junior golfers, um, they go to their hybrid. What, what is the, the longest iron that you have in your bag? I mean, is it a five iron? Is it a four iron? And when do you transition from iron to hybrid? Usually it is a five iron, and sometimes in cases that's six iron. It depends on what people are more comfortable with and what their gaps are or their yardages are the longer their club gets. Um, some people will stop at a five wood. Some people will carry a seven wood and then go into a hybrid, but that would probably only leave them places for two hybrids in their bag. Um, but you could go up to a five or six iron and then go into a hybrid. You know, and I, I want you to hear what Cindy just said. That is real gold, what she just gave you there, because I see a lot of golfers come in, just in general, or they come to the cabin, they got a three iron or a four iron. And I mean, man, unless they're really swinging it with a lot of speed, they're just not getting up in the air. Where if, where if, they, just, if they just got the hybrid in their, in their bag, that shot with that four iron now becomes a hybrid and it's a much easier shot. Would you agree with that? Or? Absolutely, I would say that for the most part, fewer and fewer golfers are have, carrying a three or yeah. four iron in their bag. Yeah. Because these, the way they're designed, are so much easier to hit. You're going to be hitting them more squarely, and their misses carry just about as far as a good shot would. So your misses are so much better. Yeah. And that's obviously the key with golf. You want to be as consistent as possible. 
All right, so there's some great advice right there. You're taking it from somebody who played the game for a living for 24 years, won six times. If you're playing a hybrid, I think I'm gonna put a hybrid in my bag. But let's talk about wedges and specifically chipping because this is an area, I call chipping, chipping differentiates. Like you're either really good at chipping or you're just not good at chipping. There's not a lot of middle of the ground, I don't say. I think people are really good at it or they're really just not very good at it, quite frankly. What do you see with chipping you think that's important for the average golfer to know? Well, I think most golfers that I see take one club around the green, no matter what the situation is, it, they always take their sand wedge. They think, oh, I've missed the green and I'm gonna take a sand wedge when they've got 30 feet to the hole. So the, the, the situation doesn't allow for a sand wedge. You've gotta be much more accurate with that. So what you do, the, you always first have to assess the situation with chipping or pitching, because if you have a lot of green to work with, then use a less lofted club. Okay. And if you don't have a lot of room, obviously that's when you wanna use the lofted club, the wedges or the lob wedges. But within chipping or pitching, ball position and club selection is the key. And that's why I'm saying the, the, the club selection really is the key. You've got 14 clubs in the bag, and that's why I get so a little frustrated with golfers that always take the sand wedge gotcha. when the situation doesn't call for it. So I think if you would experiment and try it at your club, go out and practice with different clubs with different distances, you're going to be much more accurate and you're going to save shots because it's all about we're all going to miss greens from time to time and if you can get it up and down, there you go. You're going to be saving three, four, five shots around. 100%. I could not agree more. Getting, getting comfortable with a couple different clubs in your bag to chip with is just vital if you want to really improve your chipping. So let's talk a little bit about, you mentioned ball position. Let's talk a little bit about ball position and just, is there one or two general tips with chipping other than ball position? Is it, is it the body or the movement of the hands? Talk, let's, let's kind of show our viewers a little bit okay. here about those couple of concepts. Yeah, one thing that I noticed that always creates a problem for a golfer chipping or pitching is if they have too much movement with their lower body. You've really got to keep still because you're, this is your scoring, this is your finesse shot, your touch shot. So what you want to do is remain as still as possible with the lower body so that the club can swing and just catch the ball cleanly. So if you just, you know, you can either just be on one leg or put your weight toward the left and just stay there and just I love that, and I love, I love how you, I, I really like what you said there about having some more of your way forward, because I'm a big believer in that. When you're set in there, you can hear how crisp and clean that was there when she hit that, and, and having that little bit of weight forward is really important. What about, what do, what do you think about, um, ball, you know, that's a little bit about ball position, and, and should the hands be behind or forward? What do you think there? Because there's a lot of conversation about that. There sure is, and of course, again, it depends on the shot and the lie that you have, and if you want to hit a high shot, then you want your hands more forward because you want to add loft to the shot. Yeah. But if you're going to try to keep it low and make it run, make sure it releases toward the hole, then of course you want to put the ball back in your stance and hands forward. Of course, you wouldn't want to do that necessarily with a 60 degree wedge. That's why you would go to an eight iron. Good point. So this is exactly why you've got, again, 14 clubs in your bag, although the irons you would only select an iron normally. Um, but with the L wedge or the 60 degree wedge, you normally want to hit it high. That's because there's already loft to it. Yeah. And so ball position should be more forward in your stance. And hands can, hands can be pretty much in the center of your body because you're still trying to hit it up. If you go ahead and put it forward and then put your hands forward, then you're de-lofting that. Yeah, so you're taking point. loft away. So you've always got to pay attention to the loft that you want for the shot that you're about to hit. I, I love those tips there. So some really good gold nuggets there that I think he's given us. So a little bit of that weight forward, understanding that the club you select is gonna have a big impact, obviously, on the trajectory and how it rolls and getting comfortable with those couple different shots. And then also the ball position. You gotta think a little bit about you know, visualizing that shot and what do you want that shot to do and then grabbing the right club and getting the ball in the club or in your hands in the right position for that. So let's talk a little bit about putting. You know, hopefully we've, we've, you know, we got the hybrid up there on the green or on the green, or if we missed the green, now we chipped it nice and close. We want to make that putt. So let's talk a little bit about putting because we know it's a big part of the game, um, and upwards of 40%, depending on what type of scores you're shooting. So what are some tips, you know, after 24 years of playing the game for a living, give us some, give us some insights here. Well, tip, uh, I guess tip number one would be it, putting is very individual, but we all have the same objective, which is getting it in the hole. And the best way to do that is having your eyes over the ball. I mean, we've seen a lot of people with different styles putt, but the one common denominator that good golfers or good putters do is their eyes. If I'm going to be over the ball and if, if my if the hole is this way, I want my eyes directly over the ball. And a good way to test this if you're practicing is go ahead, get your setup, and then put your head right over where you think the ball is. Now, see, I... 
my eyes were close enough over the ball where it hit that. That's what you want, because what I'm saying, or sometimes seeing, people might be addressing the ball and see how far away, now my eyes really are back here. Now, how can you possibly get that ball consistently down the line that you're trying to achieve? Or even vice versa, what happens if you're here, but you're, you're your head or your body is like this, now your eyes are way outside over your ball, which again, then you'd have to be kind of creating a stroke that you're gonna have to come out and pull it to get it down the line that you're trying to do. So your initial starting point is very key, is just having your eyes right over the ball and, and you'll find that it's very easy to take the, uh, the putter back and through down the line. Yeah, because if you, I mean, putting is, is, like you said perfectly, there's very individual. And if you can't see the line and visualize where you want it to go because your eyes are in the wrong spot, it's going to be pretty tough to, in order to do that. What do you think about the length of the stroke? I hear some different things. Some people say same distance back, same distance through. I see some that say more, you know, you should be accelerating through the putt, not decelerating. What are your thoughts on tempo and rhythm and length of stroke? Well, that's a good one. The, yeah. the length of stroke... I think should be a little bit shorter and, and either equidistant on the follow through or a little bit longer on the follow through. But obviously never very long on the back and then deselling coming in because then you're never gonna be able to judge or be consistent with your distances. Um, but for shorter putts, yeah, definitely a shorter backswing with more of an acceleration stroke because you want that ball to stay on line. If you've got a five footer or less, as you know, Line is more important than distance, but on a long putt, yeah, you definitely want to have a little bit longer stroke that would and an equidistant follow through so that you're gonna be able to gauge the distance of the putt. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, you gotta get the ball on the right line, you gotta roll to the right speed, and you gotta be able to practice both of those skill sets. So that's a little bit about the position of the eye so we can visualize it, the length of the stroke and the tempo. But, I, but before we give you this, we got a little tip here at the end, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, something about core strategy. Um, and that is your putter. Because when you came here, I noticed your putter right away. And I've had the same putter for many, many years. Uh, but how do people, I just see people that go into a store and they just grab a putter. You obviously have a putter you've had for a long time. What would be your advice when people go look for a putter? What, what should they be looking for? Well, first of all, you have to see what feels good to your eye or feels good to your body. And, and by that, I mean the shapes of putters. Some are mallet shaped, some are blade shaped. And certain people like a little bit of a mallet. Mm -hmm. Some people just like a, a blade shape. Um, and so you've kind of just got to practice with it and, and look around and you know, hit a few putts and see how it feels. And then the weight, of course, is all very important. But some are heel shafted, some are center shafted. So there's a couple different elements that go into how a putter is made that really can help make you a better putter or not, depending upon what suits your eye and what suits your feel. Yeah, so obviously this one uh, you, you, you just felt good to your hands and you've had it and you probably have a lot of good, a lot of good memories with it. I think that's a big part too. You know, we all kind of have our, our favorite club or our favorite, right. you know, and, and, and when you have a club that you've had a lot of good success with the memories with, it, that, that's important too, don't you think? Right, absolutely. I mean, I have had this putter a long time and I, I kind of think of it as a Corey Pavin or a Phil Mickelson who have used their same putters for 30 years you know, and this is an old putter as well. But uh, there's a lot of great new technology out there too. But if there's something that you are feel comfortable with and you've putted with forever, don't worry about new technology because like I said, two of the best golfers in the world, Phil Mickelson and Corey Pavin have used their putters forever and ever. So, you know, you just gotta go with what you like because it is all individual. Yeah, I know another great player who's made a lot of putts with their same putter. Yeah. That's you. That putter right there, I know, I know has made a lot of putts. So, all right, um, I wanna finish up here. Now, hey, if you got some questions on putters or we talked about chipping or hybrids or all these types of things, be sure to throw those in the comments because we always answer those. We love hearing from you. Matter of fact, some of you are teaching us some things as well too. So we love hearing that feedback from you. But I wanna talk, I wanna finish up here by talking about teeing off on the first hole. And, and kind of the nerves and some of the things that go into, you know, you've played hundreds of tour events. You've, you've, you've probably, I would gather, teed off on a Sunday with the lead and you've been behind and, and you've hit shots to win tournaments and maybe at times you've hit shots that didn't go the way you wanted to and you lost them or whatever. But I think a lot of golfers, they, they struggle with, okay, I'm walking to the first tee and maybe I'm playing a tournament or maybe I'm just playing with my boss and I'm really nervous. What, what would be your advice and your counsel to them when they walk to that first tee to kind of get through some of those jitters and hopefully have a good day? I would say just have, take some deep breaths. Yeah. It really helps. Amazingly enough, it's a great tip. People use it all the time, not only for golf, but in different areas where you might have a little built up stress or an extra adrenaline. Taking some deep breaths and just a good exhale and, and then just go out and relax and enjoy it and say, you know, golf, as we all know, 
There's more bad shots hit than good shots usually during a round. Unfortunately, that's just the design of the game. But uh, just go out and enjoy yourself because that's what golf's all about. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great advice. Put a smile on, and uh, that's you got to enjoy and to the challenge that the game that the game brings to us. So, all right, so we've got some great tips on some hybrids, some chipping uh, on your putter, some first tee jitter stuff. This has been really fun. We're going to do this again, Cindy. Thank you for coming and sharing some of your knowledge and your life experience with us and our golfers here. Be sure to check back. We got more great content that's coming out each and every week to help you play better golf.